These are the five things to teach all of the puppy training basics in only five easy steps. And this video is going to be different because my method of puppy training focuses on preventing unwanted behaviors before they become habits. This is what I call proactive puppy training. When you're working with your puppy, keeping sessions really short, really positive, and only ending on a positive note, meaning ending when they have been successful. And in the beginning, working in an environment where there's minimal distractions so that you are the most exciting thing to them. And one of the most important things, in my opinion, that I never see anybody talk about is work with your puppy around their crate. And the reason I say that is that can really help them to develop a positive association with their crate. Before we jump into my one-step potty training process, which has helped millions of pet parents in basic puppy manners, my favorite pet and puppy products are linked in the description below that you can check after this video. So let's first talk about how do we communicate with our puppy? This is really important because if they don't understand what we want or what we're trying to ask of them, training is going to be so much harder. And the easiest way I have learned to do this with puppies is using the marker cue. This is similar to clicker training if you're familiar. And a marker cue is a word I use, yes, there you go, that when they hear that word, they get a positive feeling or a positive sensation from that. And the way that we get them to feel that positive sensation, the way that we get them excited about that marker cue word is we start by just giving them a treat as soon as we say the marker cue Y-E. Yes. 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 And then slowly over time, they start to create a really strong positive association with the word Y-E-S because every time you say it, immediately you're giving them something of high value. It doesn't have to be food. It could be a treat. It could be their kibble. It could be a toy, play, praise, etc. And I'll show you examples in just a moment of how I use this. But one thing I want to call out, because you might be thinking this, is why do I have a leash just hanging out around here? Why is Marlo wearing a harness? Just a little fun pro tip is, well, Marlo, is our foster puppy. She came from a lot of trauma in her background. She's a puppy mill rescue and she was terrified of harnesses and leashes. So when I work with her, I have these things on her and around her so that again, she can start to develop a desensitization to them and a positive association. Impulse control is probably one of the more important things you start teaching today. Yes, day one, whether your puppy's eight weeks or 10 weeks or six months old. Marlo here is about seven months old. And this is important because this is going to help teach them emotional regulation. This is going to help them to not want to pull so much on leash. This is going to help them to think before they act. So less likely to counter surf, less likely to jump up, less likely to bark, less likely to yank on the leash towards a squirrel. Because again, we're teaching them to think and to look to us to gui for guidance before making an impulsive decision. And one of the easiest ways I work on this is I'll take their food, if they're a hungry puppy and food motivated or a high value treat or even a toy if they like balls, and I'll hold it in my hand and I wait, yes, and I wait for her to not be pawing at me, to not be getting in my face, to not be going to my hand like this. I don't say anything, yes. I don't say anything, I don't tell her no, I just quietly wait, obviously I'm recording, but generally I quietly wait. And when she's backed up and just focusing on me and not just on the treats of my hand, yes. I reinforce that and reward her with my marker cue at the same time giving her a treat. Another way to do this, and this is probably one of the most important things you can do for your puppy, is at least one of their meal times work with them during the meal time. And one of the easiest things you can do is hand feed them. So you can take some of their food, whether it's a kibble or fresh food or raw food, my favorite foods for dogs and puppies are linked down below and you hold it in your hand under your thumb and you don't release it until they're not pawing at you and they're not demanding it. Now, before we jump into crate and potty tips, let's talk about some basic manners like sits and downs. And these are not just fun party tricks. These are actually really important and I'll explain why in just a moment. So the easy way that I actually teach SITs and DOWNs is I'll just take something of high value and I'll lure it up. Now the key here, yes, the key here is a lot of people I see will pull their hand out, which makes them want to step forward. 
that will push them out of a sit. So the key here is to keep your hand close to their body and slowly and gently going towards their body when you're asking them. And then for the DOWN, it's the same thing. I lure it down, keeping it close to their chest and a little bit, yes. And as they're going down, as they're descending into the down, I follow it up with a marker Q Y E S while at the same time giving them a treat. Yes. So you'll see that I kept uh, my hand close to her body, kind of pushing it a little bit into hers to kind of help encourage her to that position. Let's do a D-O-W-N, keeping it close to her chest, slowly going down. Yes, good girl. You'll notice also that I'm not putting any cues to it. I'm not calling it an S-I-T or a D-O-W-N yet. I want her to get to where she's going and offering SITs and DOWNs pretty consistently before I put too many cues to it because we don't wanna to move too fast too quickly. Now, one thing I never hear people talk about at scale is teaching a sit or a down with an implied stay. So what I mean by that is when she is in an SIT position, for example, yes, good girl, I don't just say, oh, that's all. I continue to reward with the tree or verbal praise toy, whatever, while she stays in this position. Yes, giving her my marker cue as well. Yeah, yes, girl. When I teach an SIT or DOWN, I want my dogs to stay in that position until I release them with an F-R-E-E-Q. And the reason being is it keeps them in learning and focused mode. Now here's the pro tip. I don't give them a treat when I F-R-E-E -E them because I still want this position to be more desirable, more exciting, more fun than being in the free. Is If you do this enough, if, if all these training sessions for puppies, I like to do them like five times a day, but for like three to 10 minutes, depending on the dog's attention span, etc. Because I do it during every meal time, breakfast, lunch, dinner, puppies usually eat three to four times a day, plus one or two times throughout the day, maybe in the morning or the evening, just to give them some mental enrichment. And what you will see is your puppy is gonna start offering an SIT or a DOWN when they want something instead of barking, instead of jumping up, instead of pawing at you, because you have reinforced that position to mean good things. And that's why, yet another pro tip, I should just call this video pro tips, and that's that's why if you're out and about, you're not doing a training session, you're just doing some laundry, doing some dishes, and you notice your dog in an SIT or your puppy in an SIT or a DOWN, reward that. Now for the dreaded pot, oh, you okay? Potty training and crate training. These are two of the most commented and requested topics I get because understandably and rightfully so, they're really challenging. And what I've learned with potty training and crate training, just like all these other puppy basic manners, is that a proactive approach. A proactive approach is gonna be key in preventing accidents in the house and screaming and crying in the crate. So for my proactive potty training process, it sounds simple, but it does take a lot of grit and discipline. Now, the good news is if you can't follow this process step by step exactly how I have it, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna be able to potty train your puppy, it just means it could take longer. And the one step process is simply take your puppy outside every two to four hours, day and night. And what this looks like is for a really small young puppy, you're taking them outside, sometimes every hour in the very, very beginning, but every two to maybe three hours, day and night, you set your alarm throughout the night. I know, it's gonna be a loss of sleep, but here's why this works. The more they have the opportunity to practice the behavior of going potty inside or in their crate, the more likely they're going to repeat that behavior. If you can proactively prevent them from having accidents indoors, which yes, when they have an accident, it's your fault, it's my fault. It's not because we're bad pet parents, it's just because we didn't see the cue quick enough. And this is one of those practices that if you stay disciplined to it, pop puppies can be potty trained in as little as like four to five days. Some might take two weeks, but instead of like three months. And again, how this works is your puppy starts to associate, ooh, every time I need to go potty, my feet are already on the grass. This must be where I need to go potty because mom or dad rewards me. This is how we reinforce that behavior. And if you stay consistent, guess what your puppy's gonna start automatically doing when they need to go potty? They're going to start navigating and making their way to the back door or wherever you take them to go potty. Now let's talk about crate training. And the key here is to make it Disneyland. And what I mean by that is, like I said before, 
working with your puppy in and around their crate on basic manners and cues, feeding them their meals in their crate, or at least around it if they're too afraid to go in in the beginning, supervised of course, and making the crate a normal part of their life by practicing many short positive sessions of being in the crate for seconds at a time and then coming out and then slowly, gradually extending it. Now, I have a full crate training process, which is crate trained millions of puppies. Click the video right here and we'll jump over there together and go into a deep dive on that. Or if you wanna learn about my favorite puppy foods, click the video right here. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. I hope you have a beautiful day, goodbye.